Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Path Behind the Modules. This is lesson three, numbers in exponential form raised to the power. Classwork for any number x and any positive integers m and n, x to the power of m. And then parentheses raised to the n equals x to the n times n. Or you could say x to the m times n because multiplication really doesn't matter. So in other words, I'll give you an example. If I have 2 to the third, okay, so my x is 2, my m is 3, and my n equals, let's call it 4, I'll put a, uh, that's my, yeah, that's, that's fine, 4. And that is going to equal the base x, which is 2, to the power of n times n. So I could say 4 times 3, but it's okay if I do 3 times 4. I'm used to saying n times n, but that's okay. I'm just showing you exactly how they have it here. And 4 times 3 is 12, so that simplifies to 2 to the 12th power. Now we're not being asked to get the actual answer to this, it's, we're just simplifying it now to learn this process. Okay, so, pause the video, see if you can follow along with this process, and do exercises one through five, and then come back and see how you did. Okay, so here's exercise one. The base is 15, so I'm gonna write 15. The exponents are 3 and 9, so I'm going to write 3 times 9. If you write 9 times 3, that's okay, but I'm going to continue with doing it in the order I see them. I'm just going to say 3 times 9 because it's going to come out the same in each way. And my final answer is going to be base 15 to the power of 27. Okay. Exercise 2. Negative 2 to the 5th power, all raised to the 8th. So it's still going to be negative 2, so I've got to leave that in parentheses. Because negative 2 to the 5th power, that's an odd power. So that's going to end up staying negative. And then when I take it to the 8th, it's going to become positive. So, let's think about this for a second. So if I just do the rule, 5 times 8 is 40. Negative 2 to the 40th power, that's even. That's also going to come out positive, so that is okay. So negative 2 to the 5th, if I just did the inside first, that would be a negative number because a negative to an odd power will stay negative. And then when I take that negative number to an even power, it will become positive. Same as here. So the answer is negative 2 to the 40. I didn't show my work, so let me do that. It's negative 2 to the 5 times 8. And that would be negative 2 to the 40. In exercise 3, our base is 3.4. Our base is going to stay 3.4. I'm going to take the power of 17 and multiply it by 4. So it's going to reduce to 3.4 times 7 times 4 is 28. Carry the 2. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So it's 3.4 to the 16. Exercise 4, let S be a number. S to the power of 17 to the power of 4 is S to the 17 times 4, which equals S to the... 68. Since we've already done 17 times 4, this is going to come out the same. Okay, exercise 5. Sarah wrote 3 to the 5th, parentheses, to the 7th, equals 3 to the 12th. Correct her mistake. Well, our rule says you keep the base, take the exponent, and then the outside exponent get multiplied. So that will be 3 to the 35, not 3 to the Now it says, though, write an exponential expression using the base of 3, so I know my base is 3, and exponents of 5, 7, and 12, that would make her answer correct. Okay, so 3 to the 5, so I'm thinking, okay, 5 plus 7 is 12. And when do we add? We add exponents when the bases to a certain power are being multiplied by the same base to a certain power. So 3 to the 5th times 3 to the 7th would equal 3 to the 5 plus 7, which then simplified would be 3 to the 12. 
So there is our exponential expression using a base of 3, an exponent of 5, 7. Exercise six. Okay, this one is a tricky one. A number y satisfies y to, to the 24th equals 256 minus zero. But then we're told what equation does the number x equals y to the fourth satisfy? So since x equals y to the fourth, x equals y to the fourth, then x to 6, see what I'm doing here, if I take x to the 6, x equals y to the 4th, x to the 6 would equal whatever x is, which is y, and I'm going to replace x with y to the 4th, and that would be y to the 4th to the 6th, and that equals y to the 24th. Okay, that one's a little confusing, but think about it. X equals y to the fourth. So if you plug in y to the fourth inside parentheses, you take that to the sixth power. Four times six is 250. So y to the 24th minus 256 equals zero is the same as saying x to the sixth minus 256 equals zero. Next rule, for any numbers x and y and positive integers n, x to the y to the power of n equals x to the n times y to the n. This is just simply a distributive property. We're going to distribute the power to each thing inside the parentheses, regardless of whether they're just sitting next to each other with a dot, without a dot, or with a time symbol. It means the same thing. So all we're going to do here is distribute, distribute, so this is going to become 11 to the 9th times 4 to the 9th. Pause the video now. See if you can do exercises 8 through 12. And then when you're all done, come back and see if you can check your answers. Okay, here's exercise 8. We have a 2, we have a 4, we have a 5, we have a base of 3, we have a base of 7. We're going to distribute this 5, so it's going to be 3 to the 2 times 5 times 7 to the 4 times 5. And 3 to the 2 times 5 is 3 to the 10 times 7 to the 4 times 5 is 7 to the 20. 3 and 7 are different bases. They're both prime. I cannot combine them in any way. This is the answer. 3 to the 10th times 7 to the 20th. Okay, exercise 9. Let A, B, and C be numbers. 3 squared, A to the 4th to the 5th. So we're going to keep our base. We're going to distribute the power. So it's going to be 2, and it's power powers is multiplied, so it's 2 times 5. And then A to the power of 4 times 5. When simplified, this is going to become 3 to the 10, a to the 9. I'm adding here. Let's do that again. 5 times 4 is 20. 3 to the 10, a to the 20. Okay. Exercise 10, let x be a number. Now we have the whole quantity, 5x to the 7. Okay. And that is going to equal... It's the same as saying 5 to the 1 times x to the 1 taken to the power of 7. I'm just showing you what is really there that is not showing here, but is assumed. So the rule says to multiply and distribute this power. So it's going to be 5 to the 1 times 7 times x to the 1 times 7. So that is going to simplify out to be 5 to the 7 x to the 7. Okay. Exercise 11. Let x and y be numbers. So we're just going to do the same thing here. So I'm just going to split this up first. We're going to say 5 to the 1 
times x to the 1 times y squared, all to the 7th power. And then we're going to distribute, distribute, distribute. This is going to equal 5 to the 1 times 7 times x to the 1 times 7 times y squared times 7, which equals 5 to the 7 x to the 7 y to the 14. Exercise 12. Let a, b, and c be numbers. a squared b, c to the cube third. So I'm just going to write a squared b to the 1 c to the third, just so you remember that there's a 1 with that b. Distribute, 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 and this equals a to the 2 times 4, b to the 1 times 4, c to the 3 times 4. So my final answer is going to be a to the 8, b to the 4, c to the 12. Exercise 13, it says let x and y be numbers. Y cannot be 0, and that's because y is in the denominator. If you plug in your calculator 5 divided by 0, it's going to say 0 with an e on your calculator if you're using one from the classroom. If you do it in a, in a um, calculator like I use on screen, it will say error divide 0. When we divide by 0, something is undefined. 0 will not go into a number, so we can't have 0 in the denominator. Okay, so with that said, we have x over y to the n. How is it related to x to the n and y to the n? It is x to the n minus y to the n. Because division tells us to subtract after we distribute our exponents. Let me clear that up. That is not correct. I was thinking of when we had a number divided by, and we're not quite there yet. I was thinking of another thing that we have to do. This, all we're going to do is distribute x to the n over y to the n. There won't be subtraction here because... We are just distributing the x one for this problem. Okay, that is the end of lesson three. Do your exit ticket before you leave. Go home and do your problem solving.